background, right? I I given a lot of lectures in the last ten years in China on Sun Tzu, and of course before that I was well known in U.S. and you know, U.S. leading website and all that. And you find that in China there's a lot of interest in in Sun Tzu. Okay, let me give you a background of myself. I hope I hope you don't lose this, right? When I when I when I press this, okay now. Just a background, like I've been doing power plant for a long while. Right, and way back in, in even the government, I was doing corporate planning, assistant director for corporate planning. So, Sun Tzu comes in naturally, all right? And then, of course, you find that uh, the important thing is I, I actually ask advantage, but I like this to be more for discussion rather than just a lecture. I give, like, you can see my video for lectures, and I give them, I have prepared a very interesting uh, video that is about an hour long. And it's actually on this, uh, the lady as a killer. And it's, the title is interesting because it tells you how to improve your skills. You see, the most important thing now in modern world is skills. No longer qualification. I don't think people care now so much. You know, people really want to have, make sure you are able to do the thing. You are able to have the skills. Therefore, I actually write, I, I comment on, 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 I was invited by my, my history channel in US to comment on, Sun Tzu in general. And this video is actually available. I sent the link to Emily. I hope Emily will send it to you again so you can see. It's actually about how a lady become a top world, the world top sniper and the progress to it. Right? You find that uh, this is, uh, her name is Palichenko, Russian, and how she was spotted having this skill, having this talent, and then how she began to pick up the skill and then sharpening process, and then the deepening process, and how she later became known as the Lady Death. All right? She shot that more than 300 uh, targets during Second World War in a war situation. All right. So for the course I'm developing four Aventis, and which I'll be doing through Aventis with, with Institute or without Institute, right? You'll be based on, first of all, that you must have the talent. All right, I'll be teaching in NTU in Sun Tzu, and you can see some of my video, right, the, the way we, I teach the students. I noticed that our class of 50, maybe three or four are talented. The rest of them are going to try very hard to get the strategic thinking right. So you must have the talent. So I, if you want to develop, become a strategist, so you, it's a natural thing that some, some just have it, some just don't. But assuming you have some, some inclination to a strategy, then you should try and skill yourself with it, right? You should try and pick up skill and learn and think and, and like a strategy. Then a the sharpening and then the deepening and then the mastering phase. These three phases are very important. They are part of the diploma program. Of how you sharpen your mind, right? Through suits out of war. And then how you deepen it. And then how you then be a master of strategy. This lady is known as Lady Dev Mastery. All right, so the idea is actually to seamlessly to transfer, right, so it's out of war to those keenly interested. And out of war is actually applicable to war, to politics, to business, and even sports. For example, in football, you can actually apply Sun Tzu. We are now sharpening mind of Sun Tzu. Now, what I did was I actually developed 156 conceptual cards divided into three sets. And then you find that we use this set of cards that contains the core idea, the key concepts of Sun Tzu. Right? It's not available commercially. I don't think it will be available. I said through a cost because it can be misused. And I want to be sure that, you know, when I, you are able to use it correctly, conceptual cards. And there are 156 of these cards. And one of the key points really is the Tao of survival, the mastery of the way leading to survival, the starting point of Sun Tzu. Now, I spent two years to reduce Sun Tzu out of war. In English, I studied and in, in Chinese, cross-reference, and I developed this 156 card, which will be the first stage in your diploma, in your, in your course that you take up in order to apply that Sun Tzu into a scenario. And the key thing really is, is that to be able to apply Sun Tzu, that's the most 
difficult part of it. Right. Then, of course, you have this, you know, another card, the greater responsibility of the general is analyzing the grounds for strategy. Right. And this is one card. And then, of course, you find that, you know, one of the best strategies in the world is Kublai Khan, a Genghis Khan, you know, and he actually conquered almost the world, known world at that time. In fact, the British Empire is smaller than the Mongol Empire. And, 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 and this kind is very good in strategy. He's very good in ground strategy. Right? So the idea is to sharpen your mind, the first stage. Not just read and understand. You see, the problem with a lot of other war courses is that after the lecture, you understand it, you know it, but you, you haven't sharpened your mind yet to applying it. Your mind must be so sharp that it cuts through every third, every scroll, all the 13 scrolls. I hope that after listening to all this, that you ask questions, because it's, it's through a question that you will see more of it, you know. Then, of course, the idea is to invade, right, the outer world concepts inside the brain. Yes, you must invade it. It must be like, you see, you must know, there's a difference between American style training and Chinese style training. Okay, I can tell you the Chinese will overtake the world. They will overtake the U.S. No question about it. I spent ten. I would not know, have spent ten years, right, knowing and learning and studying about China across any one university in China if I don't believe that Chinese is going to lead the world. All right, and a Chinese style of learning is you must really master it. You must become kung fu. Right, not just knowing the concept, but being able to apply it. So the key idea is in a sharpening phase is to embed the outer world concept inside the brain. But in NTU, I got 36 hours to do it. Right, but then some of this commercial type MBA and program may well be restricted in doing that. Right, but you'll find a way around that. You can at least know the approach. The approach I'm taking is really based on the Chinese concept of training. Not just concept, but really mastering it so it becomes part of you. So sharpening is the first step. And of course, you know, right, to be strategic is lifelong. And having sharpened it, then you deepen it. Now, the first stage is sharpening. Now, very, very interestingly, right, in China, I discovered, all right, that they actually believe that Sun Tzu written a very much deeper work, all right. What, what you study in, 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 in the 13 chapters, but the Chinese believe that he had written another work, Passer PN 82 of it. Then, of course, this, this deepening phase is whereby you go deeper. And I have developed a book, Mind on Sun Tzu, all right, Reminiscent Asian Strategies. And that book was actually a top top prize award winner in Singapore. And it really goes deep into Sun Tzu. And you actually explain, you give example, illustration, case studies, so that you can, through that book, understand Sun Tzu more deeply. Now, a big question you should ask me is, why should you study Sun Tzu? There are so many books on Sun Tzu. Okay, now in China, there are about 4,000 works on Ping Fa, but only Sun Tzu. All right, it's still revered today after 2,500 years. And across the world, it's not just only China, in America, in US, where they study out of what in Pentagon, and of course in Europe and in France and all that. Now, having these two, these two foundations, very important. In fact, all right, I'm, I'm actually developing an online material so that, so that anybody can do it online once straight across, except that there'll be tests to measure your progress. And I found reading, rereading my book was, was, was very good for me. You know, it actually deepened my thinking too. Then, of course, you find that, right, having done all that, then you should have a mastery of it. Now, because a lot of people are doing business, so what we do is in a mastery course, we just completed, we test run it, we, with two, two major participants and we use organizing strategy. <clears throat> the key in organizing strategy is, what is organizing strategy? It's my PhD work. Now, in other words, all right, you're using a PhD work in order to master Sun Tzu. How? 
in order to compare how company actually apply Sun Tzu through a statistical process. Now, my courses are not going to be simple. It's going to be a bit more deeper than, than ordinary. But then we get a lot more out of it. We actually compare East and West. We compare Kodak versus Fuji, and we compare every case study related to it. But the whole program is now all structured with videos. Right? But to complete the whole process will probably take a year to be complete. A uh, full year is, is, is the intensive course. But then we can then select elements of it to form to form a, a, a certificate or diploma course, all right, in order to show you the approach. And then of course you'll find that my right, this is the process, right? Mastery, deepening, and then sharpening. Now I'm very glad that I've you know I use this COVID-19. I was supposed to ask a question on COVID-19. I actually use it very well. I actually have completed right this uh translating this program into completely online during during my during this COVID period. Now what is very important, which I want to emphasize, something I didn't emphasize is that after all this training is really to to train yourself so that you become able to see strategy, able to interpret strategy, able to have the eyes of a strategist. And, and I, because I also do research on the brain, the human brain, right? especially on AI. I teach AI in, in, in this, uh, I do research on AI, artificial intelligence. You'll find that actually, right, the whole idea is embed all this thing. You see, what is AI? AI actually is train, training the computer neuron and the, the computer cells in order to be better and better and better and better. And you know, AI is very, very powerful. Now, the whole idea really is that you must embed your mind in such a way that automatically you, your mind snap like that of Sun Tzu. You begin to see everything from a very strategic point of view, right? It becomes autonomous. So for some of you, it may take a year. For some of you, it may never happen. And for some, it may take a longer period. But the key thing really is that you want to gain something useful for your life. Okay, so... Right, this is a course that is that is the right, which I just mentioned. Right, first you internalize the art of war. Internalize this kung fu style. You learn all the steps, then by you, so you can throw away the manual. Right, then the deepening phase. Now the other very important part of the deepening phase, and that and actually my like my I get a lecture to marketing institute. Right, they make me a fellow of the institute because they they, they see that I saw things out of war that. The English do not see, marketers, marketers didn't see. I tell you one, the one big problem with teaching out of war, and that is out of war is written in Chinese, and it's written in the spring and autumn Chinese. 5,900 words, but it's not easy to decode the meaning of Sun Tzu. I spent two years translating Sun Tzu out of war, and then from the process, I learned a lot more. Because Chinese words are beautiful because it's actually a pictogram it embed a lot more than just English it's, some of the things cannot be translated and so other war is really right in order to be good you must understand Taoism Tao Jiao all right Tao Taoism it took me a while to really begin to see that the relation the deep relationship between Sun Tzu other war and Taoism right? and Taoism the masterpiece Taoism is Tao Te Ching, and Tao Te Ching is even harder to understand. But, all right, we'll see. All right, but what I'm trying to tell you is that the deepening phase, and this is I have to say one thing, original strategy. Some aspect of Sun Tzu cannot, cannot be applied. So what happens, you see a lot of YouTube things, is that they follow American style of teaching. And, and that's very different. American approach and Chinese approach are very different. And Sun Tzu, one of the things that Sun Tzu always emphasize, and which Americans find very hard to grasp, do you know what is it? Any one of you who is listening in? Anyone know? What is the sharp difference between the American and Chinese approaches to Sun Tzu Outer War? Anyone? Hello? Anyone? Anyone? I just want to listen if you, have, if you are still following, you know. Emily, are you around? Any one of you could, could give me a guess? 
Anyone? No? All right. Anyone could, of you could, could be able to ask the questions and a, a response to this? Okay, now, the real difference between Americans is this, right? Sun Tzu emphasized you must never repeat your strategy. Why? Because your enemy, once you use a strategy, the enemy will know what is your strategy and then they'll copy it. They'll replicate it. And that's exactly what happened, right? If you study top strategies, you see, during, during the equivalent period in history, there was a strategist, Hannibal. Not, not the Hannibal of the movie that you see, right? Hannibal is the, the Western, top Western strategy. He was actually fighting against the Roman army. The only problem, of course, is keep on using the same strategy, Hannibal. And then Scipio on the Roman side copied his strategy and used it against him. And finally, Hannibal was defeated because Scipio used the same strategy. Now, this is very important. American lost to the Vietnam War precisely because they fight by operations manual. They will keep on repeating the strategy. So deepening phase actually emphasizes that you how you tap your subconscious mind, how to originate new strategy, strategy that your enemy or competitor wouldn't think of. Right. So this is the part that I want to draw the deepening, sharpening and deepening. Deepening is you go much deeper. And of course, because Sun Tzu, when he wrote the book Out of War, he just used, he just tell you the principle, but he doesn't give illustration. Deepening phase will, you can read the book My Own Sun Tzu, right? There'll be case studies in, in it, examples, illustrating the deeper meaning of, of Sun Tzu. Then of course, the mastering phase, all right, is how you craft strategy. And then you will study how top companies in ASEAN region apply Sun Tzu. Right, through very rigorous statistical analysis, we came to that conclusion. Okay, so internal, internal, internalizing, sharpening phase, right? So this is the key points, right? The key point of, of learning. And we actually use real war strategy, real war as their fault. And then we will see, okay, how you then respond by saying, well, what, what are the principles you, you see, what I do in NTU is actually we'll give them a real documentary to analyze. And then from there, in the class, they were given a very short period of time to analyze and to quickly draw the key strategies that a competitor is using versus another. So for example, when Germany attacked France, what were the strategies that the Germans were using versus the French? All drawn from the 156 cards. And you will find, all right, if you, if, like this, if you test Sun Tzu out, if you, if, you, if, you, if you use this process, you become a thinking strategist. Then you begin to say, okay, well, why did Germany win? Why did Germany lost to the Russians through this card process? I think it's, it's a worthwhile course for you for you really to, to be able to develop that skill. Right? Then of course, right, we, we do two war scenario, the attack and then the counter attack. What do you mean by internalizing a skill? Now you see this, this is, this is Bruce Lee, right? The skill becomes Nei Kong, uh, same way, right? In Jin Sun Tzu, so that you become be able to, to, it becomes part of you. And then when you want to internalize the skill, right? For an archer, what the archer do, right? Six months, the archer will train the eye by just watching a spider inside the room. So that, you know, you know when, when you shoot, you can shoot on target. Six months, I, I did a lot of research on, on the old days, how do they train an archer to be an archer. Now, what is strategy? All right. My strategy is really that, right, you must actually be always about strategic thinking. This is my approach. When I teach students, always this is about thinking. And thinking is about the future. Don't forget, it's never about the past. And so, so Ara provides the framework but it is not the complete framework. It is the framework that had been used has survived two times years. I think it's a very good framework for then for you to start to develop your strategic thinking. Right. Okay. So it goes beyond the classroom, right? Strategic thinking, right? And then of course, winning by strategy, right? The, core, the key 
point I want to emphasize again and again and again is that Sun Tzu originate from war. That's why it's out of war. Right? And winning by strategy, you have to really start with the basics of studying war. It's not that difficult because wars are very well, especially Second World War, are very well documented. All right? And then the key idea is to win in any competition. Whenever there's a competition, the core idea is to win. Now in, in, in China, in Hanan Island, Hanan University, what they enjoy, the students love my lectures on football and how you relate football strategy right, to actual football games. Right, but that part, I think, will require a lot more a lot more understanding. It's easier if I explain some of the concept in Chinese, then you could see it now. In this case, American football. Right? American football is interesting because it is like war. Rugby is actually a game created for the army. Okay, so the idea, however, is to win in any competition. Now I need you to respond to me. Okay, have you heard of, have you read The Art of War? How many of you have read The Art of War? How many? How many have never read The Art of War before? Hello? Are you still around? Let me, let me get Emily first. I need, I need you to respond. I need you to respond. Yeah, uh, prof, prof, there are some people who responded in the chat group. Some of them, uh, Kristen said that she hasn't read Art of War before. Okay, I can see. Okay, now I see. Very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Now, good. Now, how many of you have actually heard of Art of War? How many have heard of Art of War? How many? How many have unconsciously applied Art of War? Uh, this is the interesting part. Now, the interesting thing you are studying when you study Art of War is you are discovered Art of War, actually you use it. Because Art of War is based essentially on common sense. Pardon me if I am using Chinese just now, like common sense. It is so important that sometimes, one of the things when I, when I give lectures, right, is that the, the, the manager, the CEO, would tell me, I actually use that. I didn't know it's in Art of War. So you will find, right, Art of War actually contains substantively core principle of strategy that some of you may have already used because it is common sense. Right, then of course, right, now how many have applied, okay, Art of War, only do not, only that you do not realize it, right? Listen to my BBC interview, right? I got a lot of stuff on, on the internet. I believe education should be affordable and should at least be, you know, Right, you, you hear the BBC interview, right? You find that some of the key ideas, right? And the most interesting thing is that, you know, they, they did a two interview, the interview and then they interview somebody in America. And the guy is actually a portfolio strategist, investment. Now my, 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 my degree, my MBA is in finance. I'm accountant, right? I'm a lawyer, legally trained. But I find students so interesting. I thought I was the only one of them is so interesting. And, but actually, in America, there's one American popular strategy who uses this out of war for investment. Right? Just imagine, right? And look it up, BBC Food Check Tech. You listen to that, how the American explain why he uses this out of war for portfolio. Now, BBC News, right? I don't think I'll play it here because we're running out of time. And then the most important key principle you must understand is that Sun Tzu is not about making a lot of money. No. This is where you get it all wrong. It's really about survival, right? The key concept of Sun Tzu is, is about how to, and he put it very clear in his Art of War, the first chapter, the first few lines you read it, is about survival, survival of fittest. And according to Charles Darwin, right? The most adaptable survive. Exactly what Sun Tzu thought 2,000 years ago. If you adapt, you survive. So he has got very good grounding in terms of science. What Sun Tzu thought. And this is why I like I like Sun Tzu, and I think it is it is it is you know it all ties up nicely. And then Sun created this outer wall two or five years ago during a period of war in state. You imagine when you write something, all right, you'll probably find all right that the guy who write this book, all right, during a warring state would probably all right be be doing a better job than somebody who's writing the book in a peacetime. 
So I'm now thinking of writing an art of war for the sea, you know, because China is going to fight America on the sea, South China Sea. Then be a very good period to test the theory of war in, in a given context. At least the top military tanks in ancient China are oh, 4,000 Chinese military tanks. As you know, Chinese are not, I wouldn't say that they're not, they're not the most friendly or, or the most uh, military oriented, but there are a lot of Chinese tanks, 4,000 of them. And the writing took soon to four years. You know, that's a long time. And he wrote only 5,900 character key core principles. Now, let me explain to you very simply, right? Sun Tzu wrote, so you start out of war, finally, you, he set out all the keepings, but for you to apply it, that is the art of it. That's the secret, that's the difficulty of it. But then you can use Three Kingdom, right? Three Kingdom is a very good, is a follow up. You should actually uh, study after you study Sun Tzu, out of war. Because Three Kingdom give you a lot of case studies, right? To supplement that. Now, how prices work comes to outside China to these countries, right? It's very interesting. But right? Japan is the first one to absorb Sun Tzu. Japanese to the first. And in and besides Sun Tzu, I also studied Musashi. Uh, Musashi wrote his Gorinosho. Gorinosho is the book of five ring. Now you love Gorinosho. Why would you love Gorinosho? Because it's again written in a very simple way, but the fundamental principles are there. Then the French were the first to translate it. And they, are, they call it Sun Tzu, T-S-U. Napoleon was the first to apply Sun Tzu. Now, if you want me, I give a one whole day workshop on Napoleon. It was requested by a French company, right? Napoleon and Sun Tzu. Napoleon actually used Sun Tzu very well. Right now, my Sun Tzu I use is T-Z-U because how they pronounce it. You see the French movie, right? They, they, they call out a war, they call it Sun Tzu, and Sun Tzu is different. And then English translation in only 1905. All right, and if it had been translated earlier, probably there would not be a trench warfare in World War I, where a lot of people died. Okay, now. If it had been written earlier, there would not be trench warfare, as in World War I. Because Sun Tzu believes that the most silly thing to do is to fight a war, right? So, you know, 8.5 to 12 million soldiers died, mostly in their trenches. So, Sun Tzu really put a very, a way of ranking generals. He says that the one that fight the war and many killed and many dead is the lowest rank of them all. The highest rank are those who win the war without even fighting. Uh, you see, that's the benchmark set by Sun Tzu. And then you have this, right? The question I, I say is, you know, my students always, you know, when I, when I did a course in, in NTU and I actually didn't, wasn't keen to do it, you know, because it's, it's not easy to teach Sun Tzu. But then my dean told me, look, your book won an award, you won an award in Singapore, you won an award in UK, you know, you should be teaching it to the student at NTU. And I got 800, and out of 800, I choose 50, right? And, and the key, Thing I learned really after all this teaching is that is there a war gene? Maybe some of you have a gene in you, you know, that, that, that naturally make you a good strategist. Right? And of course, you know, and I, I tell you this, but I don't dismay some of you, right? Those are first class honors, especially those are passing exam. They're not, they're usually having difficulty and struggling through my course because my course has got has got no fixed format. In other words, all right, it's not memory work, it's application work. Like for example now, right? For example now, if I'm teaching it Sun Tzu out of war in China, I would uh, I would ask my students to predict what would happen next in the next three weeks. Would Australia and China fight the war in South China Sea? Why is that they will fight? How would they? How will it happen? And and those students who get it right will get will, will get A. Okay. Then of course the quiz. How does he look like? Okay, can we can we can we see you answering? All right. Who do you think is Sun Tzu? Is this guy Sun Tzu? The guy with the sword? Is this Sun Tzu? How many you say he is? Uh go with your left, right, right. Get kick on, right. Okay, now this is Confucius, although he carries a sword. All right, you see his palm, 
All right, it's part of the power of respect. Right? He is Confucius. So when you go to China, you be able, you got to be careful when you give talk on Sun Tzu. All right, one thing I tell people to learn, why you should you learn Sun Tzu? Very simple. In a lecture, when you give a lecture, you give a talk. All right, your bosses will love it if you're able to cite something about Sun Tzu correctly. And then there was one American who actually used this as Sun Tzu. I told him, my friend, you want to learn Sun Tzu, learn the right way. This guy is actually Confucius. This is the right one, the book that I use. This actually came from archaeological find, the finding of that they dug it out and they found a wood print. And I use this wood print all right, for the cover of my book on Sun Tzu. Good, you're following. I'm very happy you're following. Please feel free to ask any question. All right. I will, I will be very happy if you to answer your question. Now next, then of course, you know, what do you think? Do you know what's the market value of Ottawa during that period? Okay, all right. Ask how many scrolls would, would you, uh, how many scrolls are there in Sun Tzu? Do you know? Nine, ten, thirty, how many scrolls are there? Out of all? Can you give a guess? How many scrolls do you think? In the past, they don't have books, uh, they have bamboo strips or wooden strips, they write on the wood. How many scrolls do you think there are for Sun Tzu Out of all? Uh, good, 13, very good. You know something about out of war. Right? Is it more than, you think what's the value? You're going to buy out of war then, you know. Yeah. Is it more than 1,000 kilogram of gold bars? Do you think it's worth more than that? Now, one thing I'm going to explain to you, and I wish, I, 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 I want to make it clear, and I should, you should record this, and I should be quoted for this, but Americans, all right, the big problem with the American economy and the world as a country is because they put money above knowledge. In China, knowledge is above money. Right. This is a very important point. In other words, actually Sun Tzu Out of War is not the best, it's not intended to be a bestseller. Right. So you must, you must realize to them it is priceless. Yes, Joseph Ng, you're right, it's priceless. But they are exchanges. When you when when a son presented this out of war to a king, you know what did he do? All right, he gave one city as compensation. Because the king says that with Sunsu out of war, I can get many cities. So he gave one city to the guy who gave him all right, the out of war. So one thing you must realize that a lot of difference between Chinese and Americans. And who is winning, who is losing, you know. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not pro-American, I'm not pro-China, I'm just, I'm impartial. But I'm telling you the hard truth is that right, in China, I realize knowledge is priced above money. Right. Then of course, you know, right, every scroll is about different aspects of war. That's why I tell most students, right, if you if you want to study out of war, serious, I don't, no point studying out of war, like, like, like you want to impress somebody, no, you must really master it so you're really good at it. Right. To do that, to do that, you have to spend some time, a lot of time. The Chinese, when I go to China and teach Sun Tzu, I was shocked many occasions. I quote Sun Tzu and they can give me the exact quotation from Sun Tzu in Chinese. No problem. They can quote off the head. Sun Tzu, so much, 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 so I was amazed because they told me that in, when they were young, this is one of the books they must pay, they must memorize by heart. The parents insist that the children study students out of what they, they memorize. It. So if you want to compete with China, you got to know, right? That that is that is that is not easy place. It's a tough place. But you can win, you can still win. If you know how to play the game, you can still win. Right now, so right, every school about different aspects of war, um, planning, waging war. Stratagem, tactical disposition, energy, weakness, strength, maneuvering, variation in tactics, army on the march, terrain, nice situation, attack by fire, and 13 is on the use of it. I'm sure you will know this. Anyone? Chapter 13, the last one. May I guess? What is the last chapter on? The last scroll on? Who is, let's see who is good at the fast. 13th chapter, intelligence, right? I give a, I give a clue here, one, two, three, right? Chapter 13 is on the use of spies. 
Now, bear in mind one thing, right? Now Americans have woken up to it, right? right? You, 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 read, you read the latest news, right? Pompeii is trying to decouple internet. Right? They want to disentangle internet so that this part belongs to China, this part belongs to America. Americans call it a clean internet without Chinese in, uh, WeChat and all that, you know, to get information. All right, spying. Now, I want to tell you the beautiful thing about, about, about this uh, other war. Why is it so different? I know. All right. I am. I thought I should. I should be uh, polite. I don't. I shouldn't say during a, a Ventus uh, a, a, a talk. But really, right? A lot of people, MBA, have to restudy its strategy. They have to. The, what they studied in MBA for strategy is out there. If they want to compete with the Chinese, they, they can't use that. That's why when I was in NTU, right, this uh, Cisco asked me. Cisco is telling me point blank. Look, Doctor Fu, I'm sure they didn't use the MBA. Although, although at that time China was was having promoting MBA, I'm sure they didn't use the MBA strategy that they were learning from MBA. It's something different. So you want you to tell our managers what's the difference? Okay, now I, let me explain. To you. I, you study this carefully. Now I'm not telling you that this can be applied. It actually been applied in many situations. But spying is very important. It's about intelligence, right? Information. You see. What Susan is really telling you is that this is actually the most important part. Why? Because the information drives strategy. It's not the other way around. You see, when you do MBA planning and strategy, you put information gathering as, as, as number one, right? You start with information gathering. You get up and you do fire plan. I used to teach MBA in strategy at SIM. Many MBA strategy courses were, were led by me. And MBA is beautiful to teach. Why? Because you have a textbook, you have a, you have a simple conceptual model, and then you get company and you apply and analyze and do case studies. Now, for the Chinese, the difference is that really that is on 13 is on the use of spy. Because spying, you get information, and information is how you then adapt. Now, Chinese emphasize a lot of adaptation. That's why Chinese chess, which is so unique. Why is so unique? There's only black and white color. There is no king, there is no queen, there is no bishop, there is nothing, it's just black and white. And so the idea really is using Wei Qi, really, you, you actually reconfigure what you have. You readapt what you have in order to meet the opportunity that it presents. COVID situation, okay, it comes, you got to rethink, restructure, re reorganize, given and then, and then based on all right, how long will this last and, and reconfigure. This is what Sun Tzu emphasized all the time. You have to readapt. And of course, you know, I, I just mentioned to you and, and I, I created this. I was in London, right? OGV was very keen that I did out of work. I, I, I told them to come down to Singapore, but they say, no, it's, it's much better if it go up. But I, I went to London, right? And then, and then they actually was very happy with the cards. And they actually right, used the cards as the basis to teach a course on project strategy. It, it's on the YouTube, you can find, you look it up, is there some, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm not a very good organizer, right? I am, in fact, YouTube was telling me that I should get some, somebody wants to help you reorganize this and charge a fee for it. But you no, know, for me, it's just documentation. So long as it's documented, it is all right. Now, how many key concepts right, are there in 13 chapters? 156, yeah. And then, OGV loves it and thought that, you know, it was, it was so easy to apply. And I did a day, two day workshop plus a gaming, plus a game. All right now. So learning the gaming way, right? So this is you. you have three sets of cards. These three decks of cards will contain all the ideas of Sun Tzu. And then what do you do? You don't have to study it. You can just play the cards among three groups and rotate these cards. And what I call learning sublinearly. Sublinearly means to say that you are, you are, you pick, you're, you're picking up as you play the cards. You pick these ideas up sublinearly. This is the key word. It is the most powerful subconscious way of learning. But otherwise, very different from other modules you're going to do with MB. In fact, I, I, sometimes I thought that maybe we should structure it very differently as, as, a, as a set of skills. Meaning to say, because other work has to be applied, all right, in situation where you are confronted with a situation in a meeting, in a boardroom meeting, you have to then explain your strategy. How, how do you think, given this configuration or scenario, how a 
the right strategy should be. All right, now this is application. An application must come from within. It's like Bruce Lee style of fighting. It has to come from within you. You cannot say, wait, let me check my book on, on Sun Tzu Adawa. Let me check. No, you cannot. It has to become part of the way. So gaming is a good way to have it internalized in you. Right? Apply out of war, three decks of conceptual card. I'm not suggesting you gamble, right? It's not gambling. It's just it's like playing bridge. Right? And then you find that you three decks of cards to map out the hidden strategy. Now, this is the sharpening part of it. I, I I don't know how to how to how to put it across to you. Nobody works, nobody do something without a plan. But nobody gonna tell you this is my plan. Do you follow? Just like America are not going to tell the Chinese how they're going to fight the South China Sea Wall. Although, you know, they're going to form an alliance, right? They're going to form an alliance. They're going to get Taiwan involved. They're going to get Japan involved. They're going to get, you know, Australia, UK, India, you know, and then the, the key thing really is, all right, and I wish I'm trying to do, okay, I, for me, Ottawa is a hobby. I enjoy it. I'm trying to figure out what is, what, what is the US strategy. Clearly, it is, it is emerging, right? You guys is using Guam, right? They spent a lot of money there now, right? They they re, they reposition all this, and they been, okay, maybe I should go to technicality, but you know, right? F thirty five, along with F sixteen, is going to be the main bulk of their attack, and they will definitely intervene if China were to attack Taiwan. It is part of the game plan, but the idea is the hidden strategy. You see, the most important thing really is strategy is important why because it is the first stage in everything you must know you must be able to sniff out sniffing is another way you see the dogs how they sniff you know sniff the spa ah, the guy's using this strategy now those in business would know what i say i know will tell you what is their strategy if the amount of partners in the same company they own each partner have their own strategy, own hidden strategy the keyword is hidden are you able to see it I don't want to rush through, all right? I don't want to rush through, but since you spend the time, you know, today to listen to me, I want to make sure you get the right message. Now, okay. Any questions, you can ask me and feel free. All right, to master other what is to grasp the strategic thinking of Sun Tzu. Master, that means you must see how he thinks. Okay, now this is my book, right? This book, I I see have some copies left, but I don't, I'm not going to say any of them, right? It, in fact, in Amazon, in our second hand, the value has gone up and up and up. This is the Russian version. Okay, I'm one of the rare Singaporean where my book translated into Russian. It's a very thick book, I must go on you. 600 pages. Right. In Russian, the Russians are very good in strategy. I think the Russians are, are better than, than the Chinese in terms of fighting war. Right. So, one of the is to not to study the text and memory, but there's a starting point. The texts are the starting point, just like the katas. In the, when you do kung fu, you do fighting, you have you must have a few set steps, kata. But the steps help you, but it doesn't constrain you. In the same way, Sun Tzu Ara War, the key idea is to win, using strategic thinking of Sun Tzu as the starting point. Then, of course, you know, right? I've been interviewed. I mean, I I, I can well, maybe I walk here, now, right? History channel, and you see about and I emphasize the reading the mind of Sun Tzu. I, I that's part of it. You have time, look, look, look it up. The history channel, I was a commentator. They flew me to Boston to comment on, on that point. Then, of course, if you want to, right, and this I suggest the best buy for you go to my institute and get this book, right? Now, my style, and I, I don't publicize. I'm if you want to, you'll find it. If you read it, right? Now, this is the I spent two years translating it. Right, I've been across to China. Okay, now I've been to all these top universities. Now, Chinese are not easy to get in. You'd be surprised. They're actually very intelligent. Right. I was in Harping. I, I, I went, I, I made a request to a Chinese and say, look, next time, can you help me? I want to go to Urumuji, but I want to, to see the cross section of Chinese of China as a whole. And I translated the book in a, in a style, right? That is, you know, English and Chinese. So that you, when you quote Sun Tzu and somebody asks you, where, which part of Sun Tzu do you quote it from? You can then tell them this is the part. Right. So this is a good book. It's, not, it's inexpensive. It's a PDF file. It's in, inexpensive. Right. So, 左, 左边中国, 
Then of course, all right, this is the Swinson Institute. You go to this shop. People, well, well, I said they can't find the book, right? but it's a bit difficult. It's not, I'm not a commercial guy. I'm not a businessman, you know, so, but you, you find it, you can find it there, right? Swinson Institute slash shop. I, it's too much trouble for me to put it on Amazon, just leave it there. But you want a proper one, put citation and quoting, you can quote me. I'm well known in the world for this area, right? Okay, now, so, and tomorrow, if you have time tomorrow, after listening to all this, I actually created a one hour video. It took me a lot of time, but I enjoy doing it, all right? Staying at home, right? Constrained to home, all right? War for Singapore, three chick thinking. Right, it's the one hour video. And I'm, I'm going to write a book, but after, after the video, after the, I find video a better way of communication than, than just books. And actually, this, if you see this video, the whole idea is, and a lot of people didn't realize it, actually, Singapore was won by the Japanese using Sun's Art of War. You'll be surprised. Do you know how many, how many soldiers did the Japanese use to conquer Singapore? You are loud. Your toes will be laughing, you know. 10,000, that's all they need. The Japanese uses 10,000 imperial Japanese soldiers to conquer the whole of Singapore. The British had got 150,000 soldiers and they lost Singapore to the Japanese. Can you imagine one? Look at my video and you'll be shocked. I, I, I comb through all the documentary, I pick out the key point, but we'll not stop there. What I'm saying is the whole idea is to use this case study and apply students, how would you defend Singapore, right? If you're given an opportunity, right? You don't have to go far, you just have to look at Singapore and you will see that everything that that the, the Japanese right, succeed, it all written in students of other world, including spying. They had a British spy giving all the information from the base, the base, the base on the island. island. Right. So tomorrow is, is released. I didn't release it earlier. I, I release it tomorrow. So tomorrow, if you go to internet, you find all right, good check tag and war for Singapore, you'll find it. If not, it, you'll be at the Sun Tzu uh, Institute or YouTube. But, but you must be seriously wanting to learn how to war. It's not for the for anyone who is just one of fun game. It's not funny, it's serious work. Uh, two question and answer. Any question and answer, please? It's about time anyway, 4.20. Any questions? Thank you for, for listening. Are you all there still? Oh, okay, you are still there. Anyone, any question? No questions? Joseph, are you still around? No question in five minutes, I come to 10, maybe we will, we will call it the day. You can ask me any questions, any questions you want, even on later scenario. I'm very up to date on, on, on things that are happening. Watch out for, for the videos that I'm going to put, especially the heavy ones, the one hour time. Right? They will contain a lot of, a lot of uh, analysis and drawing you so you will see Sun Tzu out of war strategy straight away. I'm doing one on, on, on the war at sea, all right, and, and using movies as a, as, a, as a documentary. And I'll be posting it on, on China, uh, Yuku, because the US side, they, they have some copyright issues. They don't let me put on YouTube. Any
Emily, are you still around? Did, did, did you book the, the, the Zoom? Do we have enough time to discuss questions? There's also food. There's a question from Kristen. I can't see it. Uh, she asked, how do we use Sun's Art of War in corporate environments such as public and private sector? Oh, <laughs> we, 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 we do that as part of the course. You, all right, you should see this. Maybe you should get a live organizing strategy. All right. It's all inside there. It's about this, this, this book actually documents the practices of more of the top companies in ASEAN region, not just Singapore, but across ASEAN and, and CEOs would believe. In fact, this is the book that, that is, that, that is actually in Oxford. They, they, they chose this word, Spring Joy, right? In Oxford, they chose this book of Spring Joy. And we teach, we emphasize this in the mastering program module. But it's a big question. <laughs> oh, I tell you why. Very simply, I can answer your question. When there's competition, whenever there's competition now, especially in current environment, current environment innovation driven, in other words, if, if you want to win in a game, you look at a product and a survey, you ask, how can I improve on it? If, if you cannot improve on it, there is no market for you. The distribution, the marketing is have taken care of by internet, by Alibaba, by you know all those internet companies. They have taken care of that for you. But the product all right, is something that you have to think of about. Yeah, you have to be innovative. So it, so soon as it comes in here very nicely, so to tell you that you must never repeat the strategy. In other words, you must never do the same thing all the time. You must always come up with innovative ideas, new ideas. Now, wherever there's human being competing, you will find soon as people. The only question I can answer you is, if we fight a war against the alien, all right, we'll soon be still a Still be applicable maybe not because aliens aliens are different they're not they're not biologically human but if it's human versus human then i think social other will be applicable human beings don't change that much even over 2500 years they are still as greedy as still as you know uh the good and the bad and the ugly yeah, about human beings are, are still there for example if you look at brazil play football against germany and they lost 7-1 you know, I could explain that loss, but a key phrase in Sun Tzu, and it, it fit in so well with the contact. Any other question? Please feel free. I won't charge you for it. Don't worry. Yeah. I'll be happy you ask questions. There are no stupid questions in the world, right? Any question you ask, it troubles you, it must have, it must have, it must have some meaning for you. Now, the, the, the part is that personal success, I think Sun Tzu would help if you would shape your personal strategy using Sun Tzu thinking. And I, I'm not saying that you, you should do it, all right? Or you should, you should uh, uh, follow Sun Tzu strictly. I'm saying that you should incorporate some of it because China is going to dominate the world. Trust me, last 10 years I was across in China, right? I don't think you can survive in China. Singapore don't make any heavy in China. And I got to remind the Chinese time and again that China was, Singapore was the one that helped them, you know, be what they are. But I think we are quickly forgotten, you know. Right. That, that the Chinese, you know, to compete the Chinese is not easy. It's going to be very tough unless, you know, at minimum is you must know Sun Tzu-Ping Fa. Number two, you must know Sun Koyani. You must know Sun Tzu Liu Qi. All the core ideas. It's just like you don't compete in the U.S. You must be able to know Michael Porter. Now, Porter thinking, Harvard School thinking, Harvard School Network. Uh, you know, every society has their own way to succeed. But right? Singapore has its own way of, to succeed too. Right? Succeed in Singapore and another set of, you know, you might be from RI, you must be, you know, uh, I mean, the old days, uh, maybe not even now. But 
China is rising. So in order for you to prepare for the future, I think it's good for you to know how to war well, really well. And you, you impress them. You impress the Chinese. If you, if you are able to especially quote to them students in Chinese, ah, they will respect you. Uh, there's a second question from Kristen as well. Uh, it is she's asking, can Sun Tzu out of war apply in cybersecurity landscape in Singapore corporate environments? Sure. Cybersecurity, well, it's only part of it's only part of the part of the issue, right? And cybersecurity is, is so important. Now it's all about information. So, you know, but what specific aspect when you're looking at cybersecurity is a technical so you see, one thing you want to realize is Sun Tzu is about grand strategy. It doesn't go down into specific. For specific, you, you'll be technical, techni te te technology, right? So for, for us, Sun Tzu wrote only, only, the only one chapter in Sun Tzu that deals with technology is actually the chapter 12 on fire, the use of fire. And of course, it's missiles and all that, you know, nuclear bomb. But Sun Tzu is very strong on thinking aspect of it. If a highly technical person, but I don't think such a person will make a good strategy. Your, your human brain is configured in such a way, you know, I mean, well, uh, let me explain in a, in, a, in a simple way. If you are very good in technical things, any technical skills, you know, the, the odds are, from my experience in NGU, is that you're not, you're going to have a struggle with strategy. Because strategy deals with a world that is very different from a technical world. A technical world, all the manual, you know, I. I love technology, okay? I love software, okay? I, I, I'm, and I, I, I like to tinker with software, all right? So I'm quite surprised that I'm, you know, able to, to, to but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, all technical people are like that, but most engineers, I come from the school of NT, I was in the school of mechanical engineers, I, I know engineers pretty well, right? We have a difficulty in, in grasping with strategy. For strategy, you must make decisions with based on partial information you get it gray information is never complete by the time the information is fully complete war is over in other words you have to rely on intuition <clears throat> and in most cases a woman is better than a male in strategy a lot of people think that our oh, strategy is for male no actually it's for women right the feminine role is very important in strategy. But feminine, because they're not so strong, not so tough, they can't rely on their muscle and their strength, you know. Right. So they have to use their brain. They have to use the intuition. They have to use the soft approach versus using the hard approach of fighting a war. So you'll find that the good people who are good in strategy, right, are not those who are muscular, tough, very muscular. Mancho looking and you know they are they're not likely to be good in strategy. But those who are feminine looking, right? men but call feminine very soft, uh, those you must be very careful. They they are very they are, they tend to be like Mao Zedong. You see Mao Zedong in some of the photographs, he looks like an old lady. Walks like an old lady. He's not he's not the 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 typical you know, a uh, uh, general in red tough and fighter and muscular. No, no. Those are not usually, I'm based on experience, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that you apply in all cases, but there is a certain pattern that you can see. Clear, Kristen? I hope I hope you you have you have no more questions, All right? Then I think I think we will call it quits. It's it's four thirty now. I think we want to make up for that for that half an hour due to technical problems.